Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things silage. So in some recent videos where I was talking about water buffalo and cows, I mentioned that those two animals had silage as a food source. I also mentioned that you'd be able to use silage with respect to producing TMR. Now while TMR is going to be its own separate video, and if you're not aware of how to make TMR, then please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you want to make sure you get notifications of when that video drops. Today we're going to talk about how do you make silage because, well, quite frankly, you can make it lots of different ways with lots of different machinery. And the way that you ultimately make it is really going to be up to you and your preference. Although a lot of folks like to use forage harvesters like this fence here and corn because you get a whole lot of chaff from a field of corn. In fact, the two most popular ways of doing this is gonna be either corn or grass with respect to making silage. Why you get a lot of output from your forage harvester and corn, that's once a year. Grass, well, if you do it right, you can often maybe get three cuts a year with respect to your grass field and while you might get less for each cutting, is the combined total over the course of the year more than the same amount of corn? Add to that that you don't have to replant your grass. Well, it may be a more cost-effective way of doing it with grass, but I'll leave that up to you. Before we dive into how to do it, let's talk about what do you need. So we're going to come here into our vehicle shop. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need some nice powered tractors in order to pull these heavy trailers full of chaff. So I would suggest one of these larger medium tractors or one of these smaller large size tractors in order to make sure that you have the gump in order to transport your chaff. To transport your chaff, you're going to need a trailer. Given the yields that you're going to be talking about here, I would suggest starting here with the Flegel ASW271 and moving up to the Bergman HTW65 as far as trailer of choice. But you can realistically use any of these trailers should you wish. We're also going to need a forage harvester. We're going to find those here under our forage harvesters category. If you're just starting out and you don't have a huge amount of money, well, you could use a tractor and one of these. This is a three-point hitch forage harvester that's going to go on the front of your tractor. Do note it's going to require 375 horsepower, but it's an interesting option for those just starting out. You can connect a trailer to the back, and it's a nice cheap way of getting started with your silage production. With your forage harvester, you're also going to need a header. We have those here, and we have multiple types of headers available. We have pickup headers, and these headers are going to be ideal for picking up windrows of grass or swaths of wheat, barley, oat, canola, or soybeans. Although, quite frankly, I wouldn't necessarily recommend swathing those grain crops for silage. I think they're best served swathing and using a traditional harvester. For this video, I would suggest if you're going to use these pickup headers, you're going to be picking up grass that's already cut and windrowed. But why cut the grass and windrow it when you could just cut the grass directly with your forage harvester? And that's what the Kloss Direct Disc 500 and the Crone X Disc 620 does. So these are mowers that go on the front of your forage harvester. They will cut your grass. Well, they'll also cut wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, soybeans, or sunflowers. But again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to primarily talk about grass and corn for our chaff production. We have the New Holland 130FB. It's out of the scope of this video. This header is going to be exclusively for harvesting poplar. Poplar is used to harvest wood chips, and this is going to basically grind up those poplar trees into wood chips, 
and that's going to be well outside the scope of this video because we don't use wood chips in order to make silage. Then we have several corn headers. Now, while we do have other fill types listed down here, these are primarily going to be used for harvesting corn and bringing them into our forage harvester. In this video, we're going to use the 345 plus from Kemper, but we have quite the array of headers from different brands like John Deere and New Holland. And as we get up here to the larger headers, like the Kloss Orbis 900, it is going to be a nine meter wide header or the Crone X Collect 903. It is again a nine meter wide header. Now, while most of these headers are specific brands, you're going to be able to technically connect any of these headers to any of these forage harvesters, including the LH2, like I mentioned, that's going to directly attach to the front of your tractor. When it comes time to compacting and leveling your silage in your silage bunker, well, you're going to want to use a leveler like the MES 400 and the roller like the Stego 485 Pro. We're going to demonstrate that here in a while. You may also want to pick up some silage additive and add this to your forage harvester or add it to your baler if possible or add it to your forage wagon if possible because the use of silage additive will increase your overall production of chaff or grass which is ultimately going to be going into our silage bunker. With respect to mowing of grass, well, you could use any of these mowers really in order to mow your grass. I would recommend a mower that has windrowing function like this Samez KDD 941 STH and then its companion, the KDF 341 S or the Crone Big M 450 because these two mowers are going to allow you to directly windrow your crop. It's going to save you a step in having to do that. If you don't have a windrower, well, then you're going to make sure you need to pick one of these up in order to windrow your grass. Then you're going to have either the choice of using the pickup header, like we talked about from our forage wagon, forage harvester, sorry, or a forage wagon, like we see pictured here. We're going to use the Boss Alpine 251 in this demonstration. And we can configure this with a silage additive tank. That is an option. And again, that's going to help boost our overall production. The other option that we have is going to be to bale grass and wrap it and convert it into a silage bale. We can either use a large square baler. So the Massey Ferguson 1840 is out of the question. We have the SB 1290ID all the way up to the Crone Big Pack 1290 HP HDP VC. And some of these balers are going to add a silage additive tank to them. So again, we can increase our overall production. You may choose though to use a round baler because round balers can come with wrappers attached to them. The John Deere C441R is one such baler. This is sadly, in my opinion, the only combo baler that is a part of the base game. And we can get that with a bale turner if we wanted to. This one does not have a silage additive option, although it does have this tank on front, which gives you a little bit of a hint that maybe, just maybe, it would have silage additive, but it sadly does not. What's nice about this baler is we can bale and wrap all at the same time to save us a little bit of time being out in the field. Although this baler is only going to be able to make 125 centimeter bales and therefore it's only going to wrap 125 centimeter bales. We have a Gouville Varro Master V140. This is a stationary baler and this, in my opinion, is one sweet piece of kit. The reason this is so cool is not because we can add a silage additive tank, but we can do that also. It's because we can unfold this and this comes down and it's a giant hopper. This is gonna hold 20,000 liters worth of product. Grass, chaff, or any number of other things we can make round bales of. 
we'll have a dedicated video to this at some point in the future also. So again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. This particular baler is going to be able to make 125 to 150 centimeter round bales. And thankfully, it's also going to be able to wrap 125 to 150 centimeter round bales and deposit them on the ground. What's nice about this is you can bring product to the baler, dump it off in the hopper, and then drive off. Meanwhile, the baler here is continuing to process those bales. Truly a giant time saver. The other balers here, they will make round bales, of course, and do pay attention to the size of the bales that they can produce. Some can produce only 125 centimeter bales. One can produce 125 to 150, and some can produce bales all the way up to 180. The reason it's important to know how big of a bale the baler can make is when it comes time to selecting your wrapper because not all wrappers are going to be able to wrap all bales. For example, the Gouville wrappers here, they're really going to be able to wrap, sorry, the smaller round bales, 125 or 150 centimeters. Meanwhile, the Anderson Hybrid X tractor, well, it's going to be able to wrap any size round bale, 125 to 180, but it can also wrap 180 centimeter square bales. So there you go. If you want to do square baler, you need to either use the X tractor or the SW414 because both of these are going to be able to wrap square bales. Although the SW4014 is going to be able to wrap square bales 180 to 220 centimeters or 125 to 150 centimeters for your round bale. What makes the X tractor so interesting is this is kind of a stationary wrapper. And I say kind of a stationary wrapper because as we wrap, we add bales here to the back and bales will be wrapped and they'll be pushed forward, but they're going to wrap in a large tube. So we'll have one continuous tube with several bales wrapped within it. And as this pushes bales this way, the extractor is going to go that way. So you're going to make one long line of bales. So when you start this thing up, you got to think to yourself, well, it's going to be going that way as it puts bales this way. So I want to make sure that I do have enough room in both directions. Once you have wrapped your bales, well, you may want to pick them up off the field. That's probably a good thing since if we have a twister around here, the bales just might vanish. We can use the RB2000 in order to pick up our bales if we have round bales, or we could use the Arcusen FSX6372 if we have square bales in the field to pick them up, or we can pick them up with pallet forks or bale forks, I should say, and a flatbed trailer, really whatever suits your fashion. Now, one thing if you do have the McDon pack, then you could use the Macdon pack to swath your grass. You could also use it to swath your grain and use the pickup header. But in my experience, that hasn't worked out so great. So I really wouldn't recommend using the Macdon pack to swath grain crops for the purpose of silage production. Now, with respect to buildings, because, well, it, we're not just done with our machinery. As we can see here, we're going to need some buildings in order to either store silage bales or to compact chaff into silage. We're going to find those here under build mode over under silos. We have our bale storage build building, $49,000. Rotate 360 degrees on center, and it's going to hold 250 bales or pallets. Or we have four different types of Bunker silos or silage bunkers. These do not rotate 360 degrees on center. They rotate in one of two different directions, north, south, or east, west. And the reason that is, is because these are bunkers where we're going to be dumping product onto the ground. We're going to be making what we call a heap. And when we make that heap, well, the heaps in the game can only be one of two different orientations. 
true north south or true east west we have three different sizes we have a 6 by 31 meter we have a 8 by 39 meter and we have a 12 by 58 meter these are pull through bunkers or we have a three-sided bunker that is 25 meters by 34 and the different sizes of these bunkers really is simply going to dictate how much chaff or grass can we put in these until it is basically full and we don't have to wait until it's full in order to cover it up so that's kind of a neat little thing now the only thing that we really didn't talk about here is this beast right here let's jump back to our shop we're going to go to our vehicles scroll up under miscellaneous we have a penroth agra power this is an absolute monster when it comes to compacting silage although at two hundred thousand dollars it's also extremely expensive, so it's not going to be for everyone, but it's heavy weight of 8.6 tons. It's wide tracks and it's big blade here in the front. It will aid you in compacting lots of silage as fast as possible. We're going to quickly demonstrate the use of this in the video, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because it is kind of a premium vehicle that not everyone is going to be able to afford. All right, so let's start demonstrating how this stuff works. Let's jump into our forage harvester. And we're going to connect to our corn harvesting header. We're going to unfold it. And what makes, what makes corn kind of an interesting crop with respect to using our forage harvester is we don't have to wait until it is in a ready to harvest state. In fact, the ideal time to forage harvest your corn is going to be when it is in its last growth state, which is what we have here, while it's still green. Because in theory and in real life, you're going to want to chop your corn when it still has a fair bit of moisture in it because you're going to want to count on that moisture to help aid in the overall curing and fermenting process. So we're going to unfold our header as we've done here. Then we're going to hit O to pipe out. This is going to be the big pipe that is going to shoot chaff into our trailer. I'm just going to hire a helper here because we need to go grab a trailer. Forge harvesting is a great thing to do in multiplayer. So if you do have access to a multiplayer server and some friends, well, you can often have a really great evening by setting up and doing a huge forage harvesting session on some large cornfields. Or if you don't have access to a server, you can always get some friends together and do kind of a locally hosted multiplayer session. But you can see the pipe is going to hone in on our trailer automatically. And we're just gonna run here alongside the forage harvester. and it's gonna blow chaff into our trailer. So we're not blowing corn or maize into our trailer. Things coming out of the forage harvester basically are one of either two types of fill types. It's either grass or chaff. And chaff in this instance is simply chopped up bits of corn. And we see that there, the entire corn plant. So the corn stalk, the grain, everything is being chopped up into little itty bitty bits and put here into this trailer. Now we're not going to obviously harvest this entire field. That would be a bit much for this demonstration video. We're going to harvest one pass here. And then we're going to dump it into our bunker. Something else to note is the forage harvester really doesn't have storage. So if you're not shooting chaff into a trailer while it's shooting chaff, you're really kind of losing product. Now, when it comes time to dump your product, make sure you drive all the way into the bunker. You don't want to be 
with your tail end out of the bunker when you start doing this because it's just going to make a big old mess. You're going to notice that we don't get a prompt to unload when we walk in here like we would if we drove over any sort of other unload trigger. We're going to have to force unload our chaff or grass. And to do that, we're going to hit control I. And once it starts to unload, we want to drive forward kind of slowly, but at a steady pace. That way we're going to be able to spread our product out. We don't want to have giant humps because giant humps are going to make our job more difficult in the future when it comes time to compact and level this stuff out. Now, something I didn't actually do here, but I could have is I could have filled this with silage additive. And that would have given us a little bit of a bonus on our yield on that single pass. To add silage additive to a forage harvester, we're just gonna pull up here to our silage additive palette. We're gonna hit R and you can see it's gonna load on in. So as we use silage additive, we're basically getting additional yield out of our crop. Something else we could do, although I don't think I'm gonna actually demonstrate it because of the fact that, well, mowing grass is mowing grass. Regardless of which tool you use to do it. But we could attach, for example, this Kloss Direct Disc header to our forage harvester. And we could go to a grass field and we could swath or we could mow our grass and shoot it out into a trailer. It's a two person operation. So you either need a hired helper or have a friend to do that. Something that is not a two person operation is using traditional mowers in order to do the same process. So here we go. And as I mentioned, I would suggest using the Semez mower kit because it has the ability to windrow. All right, we're going to have our mowers front and back. We're gonna unfold both. And then with respect to the rear mower, we wanna make sure we are in swathing mode. So we're gonna do control Y. And now we are in swath dropping mode. We also have left swath, right swath, no swath, and back to swath mode. But for this video, I wanna demonstrate a kind of more streamlined operation. And that is to ditch the rear mower and connect a forage wagon. Now we are a one man mowing and collecting machine. I'm gonna come over here and grab my silage additive. And off we go to a grass field, which I've already prepared on the other side of our cornfield. And the reason this method can work out really well in single player is that one, you're not driving over your windrow. And if you didn't realize, but in FS25, if you drive over your windrow, you're technically getting a reduced yield. So here you can see that we are mowing our grass. We are then collecting our grass into our forage wagon. And we can basically continue this process until we have a full load of grass. And then I'll come back right to you. Just like our chaff 
we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up here to our bunker. Now, as you can see, I kind of drove over the chaff that we'd already unloaded. And you can see that we have a little bit of compaction going on here. But as we add, add fill type here, as we add poor product, and as we drive again slowly through the bunker, unloading all at the same time so we get a nice hopefully fairly even spread the percentage of compaction is going to go down now something else that we can do is obviously make round silage bales Again, we're going to use my front mower and baler on the rear technique to do this quickly and effectively. Or, of course, you could use the butterfly mowers to mow the field and then come in and bale it after the fact. Whatever way, you know, kind of suits, suits your fancy. We got our baler running. Since this baler is just one size, we really don't have to worry about making sure that our baler is going to work with respect to its being wrapped. Oh, let's lower our baler. How about we do that? There we go. And something else that we're going to want to check with our baler is we're going to want to make sure that our baler is set to turn on auto drop. And the reason for that, well, it's going to be pretty evident here in a moment. So we're going to hit Z to make sure auto drop is turned on. We know auto drop is turned on when the menu says turn off auto drop that's how we know it's turned on just like any other round baler as we start getting our warning indicator we will need to slow down and come to a stop but with this combo baler we only need to wait until the bale chamber has been unloaded once the bale chamber is unloaded we can continue to kind of drive on because our wrapper is going to be wrapping the bale kind of in the background and when the wrapper is done wrapping it's just going to auto drop the bale off because again we turned on the auto drop off if we didn't turn on the auto drop off then we'd have to constantly hit a button in order to unload the wrapped bale which can of course get a little old pretty quick I'm just going to go ahead and make a few more of these round bales. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about compacting our silage bunker. Now, something that's not necessarily required, but definitely makes the job easier, is if you have a tractor with reverse drive. So we're going to left shift B on this Voltra. It's going to swing us around, and now we're going to be driving, well, from the reverse position. There's our front of the tractor, here's our rear of the tractor. And we're going to come here and we're going to pick up this blade. We're going to unfold the blade with X. And while we're at it, we're just going to go ahead and grab our roller here on the front. And we're going to unfold that with X. And while we don't really have a whole lot of silage here, this process is going to go fairly quick. But my best advice is to take your time 
and be very careful on the angle of your silage blade. You want to move product very slowly uh, because you can get yourself in trouble really quick if you grab too much silage at any one point in time. So we're going to come into here. And you see we only have 26,000 liters of chaff in here. But we're going to lower our roller. And as we drive... You're going to see that this... This chaff is being compacted very quickly. Because again, we don't have a whole lot in here. But the roller is definitely speeding up this process. And overall, compacting silage is a process of literally going up and down, up and down lots of times. Now, if we had a whole lot more chaff in here, this process would have taken a whole lot longer to have finished, right? This literally took no time at all. But we've got a bunch of product now outside the bunker. Not cool. Not cool. So that's where we're going to use our blade to help us out here. We're going to lower the blade all the way to the bottom. And we're going to push this chaff into the bunker. And once we have it in the bunker, we're going to raise the blade up. Keep raising the blade up. Just kind of move it out of the way. And we're going to compete this process until we basically move all, all the chaff into the bunker. See, I'm raising my blade. There we go. And now that we have our chaff at 100%, we can blanket the silo. We can't blanket the silo until it's 100%. We're going to hit R to do that. Do we really want to blanket this silo? It's asking us because we only have 26,809 liters in here. It's not a whole lot of product, right? And once we start the process of fermenting, we can't add more product to this until we empty it entirely, okay? So once we do this, we're committed to making silage with this amount, can't add more to it. Once this is converted to silage, we'll have to take it out entirely until this bunker is completely empty, then we can reuse it again. But yeah, we're good. We're good with this. So there we go. We've got it all blanketed down. And now it is going to ferment. As you can see, we're at 0%. Now I have this set to one day month. So let's go ahead and come back tomorrow. It's around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And see if this is fully fermented. But before we do that, and on our way out... Let's take a look at our silage bales. So our silage bales also require fermentation. They're not instantly silage as soon as we wrap them like some farm sims of past. We also must wait for these things to ferment. We can see that they are currently grass and they are fermenting at 0%. And we basically need to come back tomorrow and see what state they're in. So it's now morning the next month. It's 9 a.m. You can see our silage is here at 84%. I think it's going to take a full 24 hours from when we made these bales and when we compacted this silage. See, we are sitting here at these bales at 83%. So let's go ahead and kind of move time forward at a pretty good little clip. And we should be able to watch this silage continue to ferment. We're at 
And we are right at 100% now. It is 1.01 p.m. Bucker Silo is done fermenting. And we have the option of hitting R to open the silo. When we hit R, there we go. Now we have our silage. This nice, dark material. And you can see our tarp is still covering some of this, but not all of it. As we use a bucket to pick this up and put it into a trailer, or we use the feeding, um, the self-propelled TMR mixer, for example, we're going to be able to basically use this product. And as we use this product through this bunker, this tarp will auto retract until it is completely open. And again, we're not going to be able to use this bunker again until we have completely emptied it of all silage. Now there is a little bit of a trick in farm sim games of past. We have run into issues where you haven't been able to completely empty out your silage. And I want to show you that little trick here in a little bit. But let's go over here and check out our bales as well. You see our silage bales. We now have silage bales. They say silage. They no longer say that they are fermenting. So we can now feed these to our cows or water buffalo. We can use these at the BGA because the BGA will also accept silage. Here we have our biogas plant. You can see we can bring silage. And it's going to take 840 units of silage. It's going to make 504 units of energy, one unit of methane, and 756 units of digestate. With 24 cycles per month. And that's, that's this BGA. This is the smaller BGA. There is a BGA here on the map. Much larger BGA. And it's going to be able to process basically more silage per cycle and therefore make more digestate per cycle. And then we can put our digestate, as we've already mentioned in the cow video, if you haven't seen that, we can put that on our fields as fertilizer. Well, let me get rid of this rain and uh, I'll come back here and I'll show you a trick on what happens if you manage to get some silage stuck in the bunker that you just can't seem to get out. Now I realize that we didn't get really a chance to demonstrate this piece of machinery. And that's because our silage bunker kind of got compacted a lot faster than I was expecting it. But in general, right, the way you're gonna do this is you would just drive this the same way you drove your tractor over the bunker, you would drive this over the bunker, and you have your blade you can unfold, and your blade has lots of controls, left mouse up and down, left and right, then right mouse button up and down to adjust the, the angle, left, right, right, so, and then you would just, you would just drive over this. Kind of just like that. So I didn't really get a chance to demonstrate this. Because again, the bunker kind of, well, it kind of filled up pretty darn quick. Now, like I said, how do you, how do you empty this? Well, you would empty it, like I mentioned earlier, with a bucket and, and such. But what happens if it gets to the point where but it just won't go away. Well, there's a little trick. And that is if you just take your painter and you paint. Now you see my silage is going away, right? I wouldn't obviously do this if I had a bunker full of silage because I would want to use it. But I'm also not getting costed any money because this is concrete. And I'm painting concrete on concrete, which is free. But what I'm basically doing is I'm erasing 
the silage that's in the bunker. I'm erasing the silage I can't get to. And now it's empty. And now I can start this process all over again. Because it's empty. So again, you, you don't paint a fully filled bunker. You paint a bunker that you've emptied as best you can. And for whatever reason, you walk up in here and it says, oh, there's 37 liters left. Where? Right? Somehow it's, it's under the wall. It's somehow stuck somewhere and you can't get to it. There's 37 liters left. You can't use this bunker anymore. Well, just paint. Paint concrete along the walls, and you'll eventually paint over the silage, and it'll go away, and you'll be able to reuse the bunker. So maybe that's the only thing that you've learned in this video, is a little trick on how to force the bunker empty. Another little thing at least currently with version 1.2.1 .1 of the game. With respect to our bale storage, there's a little bug. And the bug prevents us from unloading our bale. Let me demonstrate it. So as you can see, we have three bales in storage. We're going to come up here and hit R. I want to get three bales out. Oh my god, what just happened, right? Three bales out. Give me three bales. Okay, here's the trick. So once you've managed to cover basically the entirety of the intake trigger, you're going to spawn your bales. And they're going to spawn outside the intake trigger, like they should. Is this a permanent fix? No. Is this going to be the permanent fix? No. Is this a fix while we wait on the patch? Yes. Is this fixed in the patch? Yes. Do we know when the patch is coming? No. Do we wish we knew when the patch was coming? Yes. But that's reality. We're not going to get preoccupied. We're not going to be focused on that we don't know when the patch is coming and the patch needs to come now as opposed to tomorrow or next week. The patch will come when the patch is ready, but there are workarounds for many issues that we have up until we get that patch. This is just one of those, is to completely block the intake so that we can get our bales out. And once we get our bales out, well, we can Remove our stuff from the intake so we can put more bales in. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned at least one thing with respect to making silage on this video. And if you've never made silage before in a bunker, I fully understand. I was intimidated when I first started playing farm sim way back in FS17 in 2016 with respect to making silage in a silage bunker. My first attempt, I made a complete mess because I was trying to do it a little bit too aggressively with respect to the leveling blade. You technically don't even need a leveling blade if you've done a really good job with unloading it fairly even by starting an unload and then moving through the bunker at two, three miles an hour and then coming back, driving over top of that and again, adding another layer to it until eventually you're at a point where you really need to stop and start driving over top of it. Just squish it down, compact it, and then once you're happy with how much is in here, cover it up with a blanket. If you want to really try to cram as much into here as possible, that's when you get the leveling blade out. That's when you get the leveling weight out as well. Till next time, happy farming.